Reaction time? Grubby's reaction to the PTR changes. To finally reveal my grandmother's favorite cookie recipe, a secret that the entire world has been waiting for. But then I saw something that may cause even more momentous ripple across the world. And it is Blizzard waking up from their hiatus of supporting Warcraft 3. This is insane. 136221070 may not mean a lot to you or me. It's certainly not pie. It's close enough to pie, but... On that note, to interrupt real quick, there was another thing that I saw on Reddit today. Since Grubby is talking about the slumber of the team. So Reddit has, of course, two Warcraft Reddits, WC3 and Warcraft 3. Um, and on the Warcraft 3 Reddit, there was an interesting video. Our friends of Bellula did a video on World of Warcraft, which is not that interesting to us but it was an interview with holly longdale who is in charge of the warcraft franchise more or less so um she said this which i think was interesting we've got the team that's doing the war within we've got a team working on midnight and we also have people working on the last tank and classic and frankly, Warcraft 3 Reforged and the RTS side of the business. And frankly, Warcraft 3 Reforged and the RTS side of the business. Can you believe it? Unlike BlizzCon, we were mentioned here. She said, frankly, she was laughing. Classic. And frankly, Warcraft 3 Reforged and the RTS side of the business. Which is She's laughing at the word business. What does that mean? We don't know. Let's listen to the grub still again. This is actually a new version of a Warcraft 3 patch with some changes. I literally just sat down. This just dropped 29 minutes ago. I've been staring in shock for 10 minutes about a new patch that's going to be coming to Warcraft 3. Now, to put things in perspective, Warcraft 3 is in a pretty good spot right now. I just did a video about how the balance is the best it has ever been in Warcraft. We reacted to this video. Warcraft 3. But it isn't perfect and change is exciting and change is even good when the change is good. When the change is bad, <laughs> you still get new things which is good because you have to adapt to it and everything. But then there's also the bad part. So I don't know what this is going to be, but I think any form of balance change can be pretty interesting. And that may set me a little apart from the purists that like Brood War, Starcraft Brood War, to remain exactly as is without balance changes. Yeah, I think the entire scene is that way. Um, there's, of course, some, some outsiders who would love to have 1.27 back. Uh, but that is clearly the minority. I think the majority of the scene would be very okay with crazy changes if there's checks and balances in place. For you see, for Brood War, the Korean esports organizers since decades have been managing balance with maps. But for Warcraft 3, the same has not been the case. So we've relied on Blizzard patches, but sometimes they were far and few between. When Blizzard started doing some PTR patches a year or two ago, it was also a surprise, just like this one. Because I didn't even know they had a classic team. I don't know who's working on this. Nobody so does. So many questions, so much mystery. It's kind of like a kid with Christmas. How did... So, so I see this still a lot that people mention that the company Playside is responsible for this. There's, this was the case when they brought in new features like rank play, etc. Like a year ago or whenever that was. Nobody knows if that is still the case. I would suggest, elaborate guess, that Playside is not responsible anymore. And not working on this anymore. Because what they did was quite some engineering work on the game. What's happening now is people are changing values in an Excel sheet. Santa Claus get on the roof and get all the presents down the chimney. 
Uh, how did he get in the house and place him under the tree? I don't know. I don't know how everything works anymore, but uh, I do know that we might be getting some presents. Now, this is going to the PTR. That means it's not live yet. And when we recently got PTR patch notes for Warcraft 3, it went through several changes after different community people and players and Redditors and Twitterers and, and YouTube video creators, after everyone gave their thoughts on it, it seemed like Blizzard was reading those, was watching those, and was using them for feedback as well. And I feel like they came out with a really good balanced approach with the things that they finally came out with. So what are they gonna come out with now? I've been spoiled on one change, didn't see anything else yet. The one change I saw is insane, so I'm very excited, let's go. We've updated our backend server infrastructure to improve- I think that's very genuine. Like... I like to see... a person being this excited about a balance change after playing this game for 23 years. That's good. Of ...server frame rate. I wonder if that also works for... the client. The login client, like, uh, you know, the main menu. I wonder if we'll have fewer disconnects during the game. Desynchronizations. I wonder if they'll ever do any changes to improve the latter stat counting. Or if my profile will ever count more than five games, even though I've played thousands. Yes, this is something that is not talked about enough. The game is still broken. The game is still essentially broken. If you want to know what specifically is broken, watch the witty video, Four Years of Reforged. It is crazy how broken this game is. Not balance, but just the game. And this patch doesn't do anything about that. We don't know what this means. Server frame rate. I reached out and asked. No response yet. So, I don't know. That I don't know yet, and hopefully they see this and they can look at the little data issues, uh, the data entry with that. But little. Let's jump in. First balance change. Little. Some people have millions of wins on this ladder. You call this little. That's very kind of him, or very nice of him to say. Just. Polymorph can now target heroes through second duration. Aye, aye, aye. No aye. Okay. There goes the excitement, eh? There goes the excitement. He knew about the torrent change and he got so excited because his race gets buffed and he's so biased. <laughs> and now it's ruined. <laughs> Hey, who wants to test this with me? This is gonna be a legendary YouTube video, I'm sure. Uh, no. No, I don't think so. No. Uh, starting good? I mean, no. This this is not... I know I, know I need to say more than just yes or no, but... Correct. Look, so Polymorph does not work on Spirit Walkers, Upgraded Mountain Giants, and Heroes because they are hero status resistance. They have a special level of protection. You can also not possess heroes. This Holy shit. Would that mean you can now polymorph mountain giants and walkers? Did someone test that? Yo, let's test this. Okay, guys. Can you polymorph not only a hero, but also a mountain giant? Yep. This better be good. Oh my god, you can... Our forces are under attack. Um, I highly doubt that this is their intention. Yes, of course, it makes so much sense. It makes so much sense. Because as uh, Stefan said, only three heroes... Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, only three seconds like heroes, that's right. Um, as Stefan said... Hero magic resistance is the passive. And Walker and Mountain Giant both have this. I really wonder if this is their intention. Is that a big issue? Where did that Mountain Giant go? Am I, where did I put it? Let's take this. Is three seconds polymorph on Walkers and Mountain Giants an issue? 
two, three. Hmm. Uh, yeah, good we tested it. Good to make sure. With Warcraft, you never know. Wait, that means the Dark Wizard creep will now polymorph your heroes. Oh my god! <laughs> no way! Shit, where's the Dark Wizard? What map has a Dark Wizard? Where are you? There you go. Let's go! You should hex me, bruh. I don't think it does. We shall not be hacked, boys. Okay. Test. If he hexes a unit instantly. I walk in shadow. See? That's different. I'm not unkillable. It's a different polymorph. Okay, so... Creep Polymorph is different from other Polymorph. That's why um, Frost Armor on Creeps was taking too long. You can Polymorph Mountain Giants as well as Walkers, which is probably not intended. Okay, cool! I still don't think it's crazy dramatic, because tier 3 spell and very expensive, and of course dispellable, but... I, of course, see some issues with it. There's spells in the game that come from regular units that you can spam cannot be cast on heroes. Full lockdown. Possession is a full lockdown and takeover. And Polymorph is like Shadowhunter Hex, right? And I just mentioned how Shadowhunter Hex is so powerful because together with Shadow and TC, you've got two lockdowns on two heroes that are in the same race. And that makes it very, and very snare. powerful. And, and with snare. sorceresses, you could have um, 20 sorceresses and do 20 polymorphs in a row on a single hero, and they're gonna be hexed for the rest of the game. That's kind of like Tinker from Dota 2 with uh, his rearm and Scythe of Ice. That, that feels pretty crazy. I mean, in this specific case here, right? That's displayed. All you gotta, like, A, it's only three seconds, and it costs, how many polymorphs? Is, polymorphs one, in a row in two, three, is it four polymorphs? Some are dispelled immediately by dryads, and worst case, you could dispel with a wisp. Like, in this specific case, I think it's just a waste of mana. It's just a waste of, like, 600, 800 mana. Single hero, and they're gonna be hexed for the- Like, here. Every Sork has two Polymorph, though? This is not a realistic unit composition, obviously. Um, it's, of course, fun for a test. For the rest of the game. That's kind of like Tinker from Dota 2. With uh, his rearm and Scythe of Ice. That, that feels pretty crazy. Now, of course, you can dispel things. Shout out to the editor, by the way. To put in-game footage on this. Out of Warcraft, take notes. <laughs> that can be nice, right? You can just dispel it. Just dispel it. If someone gets Polymorph, you get Dispel. And that's actually why nobody gets Polymorph. Because it is like 200 mana or True. 200 plus mana. And then someone... Mass Polymorph is never better than Mass Slow. I... Think... I very much agree. You can just dispel it. So that's not very uh, mana efficient, usually. The same problem with most tier 3 upgrades for casters, which is like a 200 mana spell, is that uh, it's too cheap to dispel for you to invest in it. But wait, don't we have an example of another unit that regardless, despite the dispel availability, could be masked against orc a kind the old grudges the old ptsd from 2005 is now lighting up in his brain kind of tier three caster unit 
that also has a spell that feels actually way too powerful on heroes? Is there not a unit like that already? Oh my god, it's Druid of the... T Did someone just say Cripple? Did you just say Necromancer, dude? <laughs> Druids of the Talon! Druids! Do 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 do! So, I still don't think it's the same spell, man. Um, A, Cyclone is way longer than three seconds. You get experience while Cycloned. You're also protected. You're invulnerable when you're Cycloned, which is kind of a buff. It's a big buff. You can't die when cycloned. You can die when you're hexed and polymorphed. And you can't use items. Being invulnerable during a cyclone is quite big. It's Tornado Cyclone from Talons. That's also way too powerful in heroes. And therefore Talons have found their niche of being masked against orc because you can cyclone heroes despite the availability of dispel now is that where it may go for human are they gonna polymorph everything i think probably i think probably it'll be tough to win with mass polymorph my initial thought was no like there's no way this is too good but this is a ptr it is a once again stefan MVP here saying Cyclone is 75% of the mana cost and two times the duration compared to Polymorph. That is very different. Time to be brave, risk taking, and avant garde. Yes, I say. Yes, until I say. Yes, I Let agree. Let us test it. Very this much is a fun agree. New toy, Hero Polymorph. Ever this could enable some cool plays. I like it. I like, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm with the Grubster. I'm not jealous. <laughs> um, this could enable some cool plays. I don't see this from a one-on-one -on -one perspective um, being crazy, crazy OP. Now, Can you steal Polymorph? No, right? It's not a debuff per se. Ever since 2003 Reign of Chaos, Polymorph has not been used almost ever. I'm not going to say never. It has been used sometimes. It's never been used. As Is there a hero channeling spell where it could really matter? Good question, Kevin. Against human. A Alchemist comes to mind. Heal spray. Ultimates, of course, that is a sweet solution against some ultimates, but you usually have a bolt anyway. And please, let's remind ourselves, you rarely have a lot of sorcerers. Polymorph can be stolen. No way. Wait, what? Are you sure? You could inter uh, interrupt Blood Mage, but in Human Mirror you never see a Blood Mage. Human already has the bolt to do interrupts. Yeah, but if you have the mana anyway, using Stormbolt offensively for a kill is a lot better than just using it for a disable. So against Tranquility, I can definitely, like, Tranquility and Alchemist, and of course, to prevent some timings, like prevent an invo potion, uh, prevent a heal. Um, stuff like that. So basically, it will help with nuking. To counter coils, to counter staffs, to counter holy lights, to counter the fact that you can use a potion or a TP. In those situations, three seconds matter. But you also want slow. Sometimes you want invisibility to save your units. I think this has a very, very high cost of opportunity. Because it's 200 mana. You could use four slows or one polymorph. I like this opportunity cost. As a strat. I think. It has occasionally been teched into in extremely rare situations in various matchups. 
and we have seen some polymorph on Druids of the Claw, uh, Knight of Druid of the Claw sometimes. It's pretty strong. I think it's pretty strong. I think it's especially strong if you don't do a meme strategy where you just mass sorceresses. It's going to be strong, probably, in about 1 to 150 games. By the way, I feel a weight falling off my shoulders. I was worried the patch was going to be too small, that I wouldn't have enough to talk about. But we've only been at the first change. Let's move on. Grubby, you only need 10 minutes for the mid-roll on YouTube. So good. To the next. We can always cycle back in here later. Change number two. Sundering plates once again requires an upgrade. So knights have this de facto default upgrade where they do bonus damage against medium armor units. And it's a lot. And it's helping you in a lot to deal with fiends. They're going to give it an, an upgrade requirement again, which means time and money. And time is money. So it's money and money. Did, were they worried that this is too strong? <laughs> is this is this a change? Because this change is mostly targeted at human versus undead. And although Fortitude was able to beat Happy once or twice, Happy just won another tournament, right? But you're not only going to balance around Happy. Happy is just really good, right? In general. Sundering Blades is very strong and annoying. I do think it needs upgrades. Uh, I think this is okay. Needing an upgrade. You may I would like to see or like to hear if he thinks this is enough. Because that is just a delay. That's just an X second delay. This goes, of course, in tandem with the Mountain Giant buff as well. Do you really need the upgrade as a whole? Is, I think, the bigger question here. Human needs a lot of upgrades, and it would, it's what makes them a little weaker. Because when everything is upgraded, they're one of the best. Orc. This is, this is the one I saw. Look at the this joy! This is where my eyes went to. In a lineup of, of text... My eyes went straight there. Torrents tier two. <laughs> Can't stop looking at. This is crazy. This is crazy. Now, let's let's be honest for a second here. Torrents at the moment, despite every buff they've received, are extremely difficult and niche to make use of. That's While right. I have shown some torrent games on my Warcraft channel, youtube.com slash follow grubby recently. And much of that is done in an environment not against the top professionals of the world. Torrents suffer from a design issue. They're a tier 3 unit that comes from a building that has no... I want to say, before he goes into the problems of Torrent, that we've seen Soin play this quite a bit in Mirror on specific maps. Lin has tried to implement Torrent versus Happy because, of course, ghouls are an issue in that Happy vs. Lin matchup and Torrent on paper should be able to get rid of them because that's exactly the niche they are designed for. Destroy melee units. A lot of them. That's what Pulverize is supposed to do, right? But it still didn't work. They're a tier 3 unit that comes from a building that has no counter to their counter. So if you look at the barracks for human, it produces a knight, which is a heavy armor, tier 3 melee, with high speed, high armor, and pretty good damage. It is a melee unit, means that it can't attack air, and it's heavy, that means it takes 200% damage from magic damage. When you look at the other tier 3 units, like Undead Destroyer, Undead Frostworm, those deal the magic damage, which is double on knights, and they're flying, which knight cannot hit. And they can hit the knight at the range, right? So they have all these advantages against knights, which makes the one tier three unit that you go towards just completely destroy the other. But it's fine because knight is very fast, so sometimes he's a harass unit. He can also outrun his counter. Um, he can be combined with other units that destroy frost worms or destroyers such as Moss Flying Machines. He shares an upgrade with Flying Machines, right? You can also go Barracks and then surprisingly pop out a Knight because your Barracks at first was to get your Footman. Then uh, you suddenly make a Knight. It's a surprise. 
you didn't have to make a barracks to create the knight. And I do have a little problem here with the argument because you see the tech. Or you should, at least. That's a two minute tech. You can get ready in these two minutes. It's of course better than uh, seeing the tech and then knowing he has to go for a building. But that is not the case with Torrin, right? It's role reverse. You have the totem. I also need tier 3. Like, I don't really see the comparison here. You have the Torrin totem. That is kind of like the a sucker punch, right? You didn't see it coming. It's like the difference between a telegraphed, I'm about to give you a whopping, son. You better dodge. Oh, he died. Doesn't Grubby refer to the element of surprise? So yes, there's the tech, but you don't need to produce the torrent. Well, where's the difference compared to the torrent totem? You could just have Raider Walker and you want the master upgrade for Walker. I really don't see a difference in torrent totem and Rax. Obviously, you don't always play a torrent totem. And you always have to play a Rax. That's, oh, yeah, that's true. But then, but he's making a lot of good points. Oh, yes, 100%. Not arguing against it. I'm just saying that I have a little bit of a problem with that argumentation. Dodged, right? Because he saw it coming. I suppose 100% of tier 3 humans have a barracks, but not 100% of orcs do have a totem. That's true. That is very true. That's what the Tauren is. Because the Tauren is like, you go tier 3, you make a totem. What's the totem gonna make? Well, it's gonna make Taurens. Well, Why? Walkers because it's do called it. the Tauren totem. It's yeah, but it makes walkers too. <laughs> and his spirit link is really strong. Kirby means you can counter all the units from the totem with magic air. Very true. But with Barracks, Law, Slaughterhouse, you can counter everything with one unit type. That, Timothy7, is very true and very correct. Yep. That's right. That is true. It's gonna make torrents. It's like, I'm about to give you a whopping. Better be careful with those archers because my torrents are coming. And you're like, you're making torrents, eh? How about Papa Chimera? I'm like, okay, I guess I'm countered. Shit, you got me. Okay, I said. But. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm almost a bit sorry, but to go for chimeras. You need a chimera roost. I mean, it's closing the gap, obviously, uh, and then it's a hard, hard counter. But when you see the chimera roost. You can go bats, right? That's like, there's counters in this game. What I was going to do, and then I went to do it, and you countered it. Checkmate. So if torrents were made from the barracks, like knights were made from the barracks, that would eliminate one weakness. Then you look at the slaughterhouse, same thing, right? There's the abominations, tier 3 heavy melee. But the slaughterhouse also produces destroyers. Which is yep. not an abomination. Yep. So if the undead goes one or two slaughterhouse, you're like, well, I don't know what it's going to be. It could be statues, could be destroyers, could be abominations, could even be meat wagons. But they suffer from the same issue of losing to air. So uh, the torrent is predictable and telegraphed. He's slow, so he cannot outrun his counters. He doesn't come from a building that has counters to the thing that counters him. Another problem for Torrin is he needs a lot of support, either yep. bloodlust or walkers or witch doctor or multiple and probably a tc for movement speed as well i 100 percent agree with that he usually needs endurance aura to have the movement speed to catch and then there's some hard counters that aren't heavy air such as kodo devour in orc midor Yo. and then there's a uh, night elf can spam cyclone or a mountain giant taunt which Yo. interrupts their attack and Ooh. then they can get slowed by frost arrow, Correct. dryad poison, etc, etc. Sorceress. And in the end, usually torrents end up not working. Which is why almost no one makes them. People are trying. So, 
listening to this. Isn't the solution to everything just hard skin? <laughs> I mean, not against Polymorph now, obviously. But isn't the easiest solution to all of this hardened skin? Resistance skin. Yeah, 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 resistance skin, resistance skin, resistance skin, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So they wouldn't be magic immune. They could still be nuked, but it's tougher. They could still be crowd controlled, but less long. You can be a bit more creative. Yes, that is true, but we have to stay in the realm of the blizzard janitor and the blizzard janitor he can't engineer or he doesn't want to engineer and applying a passive is relatively easy in the editor or in the excel sheet if you want to be more creative that probably requires engineering Kurifian also says it, if both Torrent units, like Walkers and Torrent, have resistant skin, that's kind of their identity then. Yep. Yeah. It shouldn't be immune. It shouldn't be immune. It should... If they do something like this... It should be the hero magic resistance. Then obviously they can't be tier 2. Obviously they can't be tier 2. And that would that would get rid of the hard counterability, similar to Mountain Giants. And this would also prevent the issue that orcs don't get a unit on tier 3. And this would also prevent the issue that grunts don't have a place in the game after tier 1 anymore. And what a lot of people, a lot of people said this already, but a lot of people probably don't realize creeping with Torrent is crazy. Shadow Hunter Torrent creeping? Completely insane. Imagine the Murloc camp on Aquals as an example. Everything you can easily creep with immolation, you can easily creep with Torrent. And fast. The speed of torrent creeping is insane. But I feel like people are trying because it's fun and not really because it's good. And generally, a torrent is just a really late grunt that's a lot stronger than grunt, but gets countered by everything else, which is also uh, countering the grunt. So you would never... Again, I disagree with this. Um, they're on the same path, of course, but they fork. Like... A grunt is very, very, very bad against a lot of small melee units. The torrent is very, very, very good against that. Never transition out of grunts and then go to torrents because they're losing to the same thing. Uh, you might transition out of berserkers from the racks into. Pulverize is still tier 3. There is a mini pulverize built into torrent. Torrents, or you might. Regardless of the upgrade. Might support your berserkers from the racks with the torrent. But it requires you to make Tarn Totem. And that is usually a risk that you cannot often take. This is a very interesting decision because it will completely change the Sucker Punch value, the Sucker Punch Quotient. I'll call it the Suck Quotient uh, 
of the Tauren because now anytime you're going for the Grand Raider Walker strategy or the Headhunter Walker or whatever, you could squeeze out a Tauren in tier two without the telegraph of I'm going to tier three, without the telegraph of I'm building the totem in particular for Torrents. If you're going walkers already, getting one or two torrents now oh, could be a out. really interesting decision. That's super outdated. Grubby editor, this is super outdated. Walkers have to go here. Walkers here. All right, but if you're not going walkers already and you make the tier two totem at tier two, that might still be a bit of a giveaway. But you could do torrents and headhunters at tier two now. You could have it be like a valid strategy to just open with headhunters and then go torrents immediately at tier two. And I think that's super interesting to try. Chad says you could get rid of the mini pulverize and then the tier two torrent wouldn't be that strong. But then it's really just a big grunt. Then it doesn't make a big difference. And then it's really boring. So yeah, you get rid of that issue, but you still have that big, that big game design issue. Two big game design issues. With the Torrin then being very comparable to a Grunt. Same attack type, same armor type, um, no AoE, and no unit on tier 3. Is it going to be broken? Remains to be seen. So far, I cannot judge because I really don't know how good Torrents are when they're in the field that early. Because they're never in the field that early. By the time you get them, everyone has massive counters. So I think it's very interesting to try. Uh, just like Polymorph, I would be careful to see that it is not too powerful. Uh, but let's see how it goes with both of these. This I would be of the opinion that you can try the Polymorph change. I wouldn't even... The longer I think about it, I wouldn't even try the Torrent change. This is going to be a more impactful decision you'll see more often than this. This is tier three and a half. You need to go to tier three, then upgrade it, uh, and you need to have Sork, so it's quite conditional. This is much less conditional, so I think it's very fascinating. Very good point. It would also mean, if this goes through, that Orc has no more true tier three units. The tier three will only be to get your third hero and all the different upgrades. Very interesting, very interesting. And I wonder where they ended up at this idea. Who are the Brainiacs at Blizzard, at Blizzard right now? As far as I was told on the Hive Discord, these are mostly ideas from when the Reforge team was still there. So four years old. <laughs> Which is crazy. Uh, that would also be in line with the pickaxe, with the tanks attacking ground, apparently it's all coming from the same person. Ooh, and I never really liked that person's idea much, to say the least. For both of these, I can't imagine- It's not Matt Morris! And either one of these has been suggested often by the community. I find levels of you know, creative thinking like this. Uh, very interesting because it is not just a blueprint from some latest community sentiment. And it feels like real creativity. Interesting. Night Elf. Priestess of the Moon. She ranked lowest on my tier list of best heroes in Warcraft 3. Deserve. Tier D. Sharing that lowly spot together with Crypt Lord. Priestess of the Moon, Searing Arrows, Mana Cast reduced from 8 to 5. I'm on board with that. I think that's okay. Uh, that is uh, pretty good damage. Uh, Searing Arrows has always been pretty good damage. It's 10, 20, 30 for levels. Priestess of the Moon first only gets used right now against Knight of Mirror, and not often. And as a second or third, we don't see her much. When she gets picked up as a third, it's almost always True Shot Scout Owl, because Scout Owl uh, scouting can be useful. And also because Searing Arrows is kind of bad because she doesn't have high attack speed or agility gain. True. And it's expensive, man. It's a lot of mana. You're always out of mana and that means very expensive healing at the Moonwells. And generally you get Orp of Venom on her anyway because Orp of Venom is very strong 
I'm gonna try not to express myself in hyperbole and say Orpo Venom is broken. That's gamer speak. Orpo Venom, Venom is very strong. And if you have money for it, you put one on Keeper and on Priestess. And that so Grubby doesn't want to be a gamer, huh? Is he gamer shaming us? Is he distancing himself from us peasants? I very much agree. I said the same thing. Means, I guess not everyone knows, but you cannot use Orb of Venom and Searing Arrows together. Uh, only one Orb effect per hero in Warcraft 3. Dota players know this, right? So I think this is an okay uh, buff. I support it. Uh, Priest of the Moon, Searing Arrows damage increase from 10, 20, 30 to 10, 25, 40. I think that's okay too. She's gonna hit like a truck. That seems pretty fun. Yeah, that seems fun. That's gonna hurt. Uh, cool. Let's try it out. Mountain Giant food cast reduced from 7. So I was looking at the editor to see if there's any cool effects that you could put on the Searing Arrow because I still think that pure damage is just boring. But I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find anything that would fit the theme of Night Elves. Multishot? Isn't... A, isn't Multishot an orb attack? And if not, would Multishot spread Orb of Venom three times? Because that's obviously broken. Orb only worked on the main target. So it's similar to Cleave. Make the Searing Arrow pierce through. In my opinion, and I don't know if that is broken or not, but I think the best thing you could possibly, probably, maybe, give the Podom is the Dota Arrow that stuns a little. Just copy-paste from Dota. Would that be broken? That is the skill shot, the Mirana Arrow. So it's an arrow that stuns for a short amount of time and adds a little bit of damage. And it could be a skill shot. A little bit of a stun. Depends. I mean, you could obviously balance it however you want it, right? So I think in Dota, the longer it travels, the more damage it does and the longer it stuns. You don't really have skill shots in Warcraft 3. That's what I'm saying. Why not? And we all know that Night Elf doesn't require skill anyway, so that would be a nice way <laughs> to... <laughs> it would be pretty bad in fights, because there's so many units compared to a Dota fight. And the bottom has to be with the army because of Aura. Yeah, maybe it doesn't work that way. Maybe it doesn't work that way. It would be more fun than the damn Searing Arrow, though. So where were we? Potom? Yeah, still, I would love to see different stuff for the Potom. Like, Searing Arrow is just boring and redundant because Orb of Venom is so good. 7 to 6. I think that's okay. I think that's okay. I will say they're not my favorite unit. Mountain Giants. I think the way that their taunt works is kind of irritating. I think they're maybe my least favorite unit in the game. It shouldn't be my bias that determines uh, how the game is gonna, you know, how the game should be. They're a really cool idea. So if you don't know, a Mountain Giant in Warcraft 3 is the shared highest food unit in the game together with Frostworm. This is counting the normal races, not like creeps you can hire level 10 dragon or something. So there are seven population unit and where the Frostworm is a slowing air unit with splash damage, MG just hits you. And not very hard. Definitely not as hard as that cast would have you believe. For 25 gold, uh, 100 lumber, needs two upgrades, special unit upgrades, not even counting Hunter's Hall upgrades, and then he only hits you for like 40 damage, 40, 50 damage, slow attack speed. Not impressive. He's very tanky, 1600 health, and he gets two upgrades that make him extremely more survivable against physical attack damage 
as well as against spells. He gets a kind of debuff resistance. With those two, MGs become not just tankier than heroes, but they can become magnitudes of tankier than heroes. Several magnitudes. You may unload more raw damage on a mountain giant than you would to kill three full heroes. That's how tanky they get. So why would anyone in their right mind attack a mountain giant over the archer that's standing behind it? Well, he's very big, so it can be hard to get around him. And secondly, he has a taunt ability. So how does that work? MMORPG games have taunt, right? ARPG uh, uh, mobile games have taunt. How does it work? Usually it's a forced attack. Not so in Warcraft 3. Mountain Giant Taunt is a single use, non mana casting, cooldown based ability that you can use like every, I don't know, tw 20 seconds. It issues a single attack command to every enemy unit in a radius and it wipes their command card. It wipes their current command queue. So say for instance, if I say, hey, uh, Grunt, can you go here on the map? And then sh I hold shift and then you can go here and then I hold shift, then go here and then go here, right? This is something you can do in RTSs. Uh, when the mountain giant presses taunt, everything gets wiped, which means my effort of like doing this, 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 this is gone. And an issue of attack is issued on the mountain giant, which uh, is an okay way of doing it, I guess. The other way you could do it is like a period of attack. Like it's like a period of forced attack and then the unit goes back to what they were doing. So you essentially borrow them. Do you think this team could implement this? Do you? Ooh, I don't know about that, pal. From what they were doing, they have to do two seconds of walking towards MG and attacking him. And then they're freed again from the stun pool, let's say, the taunt. And then all the commands resume. That's one way you could do it, but this is the way it has been done. And so that is a very easy thing to override, first of all. Uh, you give one attack command on my unit to attack your mountain giant. If I use 200 APM and I'm playing like this, I'm immediately gonna stop it, of course. Like, I'm not gonna let all my units attack your mountain giants. I'm gonna refocus to what I wanted them to focus to. It's a little annoying to, like, lose my current attack command because I may have told my berserkers to kill that Gark and then shift click, that, 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 right? So, you know, I guess he, they're meant to be annoying because they're a tank. But uh, it's not very scary. And the worse a player is, the better taunt is against them. If both of you are deep bronze level four uh, players and I, and I press taunt and I'm a bronze four, you're bronze four, maybe you accidentally let all your units attack my mountain giant for 10 seconds. Right now it's really good. But at the pro level, it's completely useless. And even middle level uh, Warcraft 3, people are already microing their units. So it pretty much does nothing. But when mountain giants were too powerful, uh, they were being masked a couple of years ago. What was happening is people would spam mountain giants, even though they're very expensive. If you could get to like six or seven, they had a double taunt back then. That's thankfully gone. Uh, and that would overlap so much that if you pressed taunt on every mountain giant uh, about two seconds apart, there'd be taunt commands given all the time. And that means melee units would be told to connect with one unit and then, so the next, broken, and then the next and then the next and then the next and then the next and so even though i'm spamming uh I'm, I'm issuing commands not to interact with the mountain giants it is so pervasive There's no chance that There's it would no just chance. keep happening anyway say for this was this is those are the issues that were brought into the game with matt morris this kind of stuff is what i talk about when I mentioned Matt Morris, that we should never, ever, 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 ever have stuff like that again. For instance, these are all mountain giants, right? And they're all pressing taunt two seconds apart. And then of course, I've got like a million grunts over here, let's say. Then the grunt, which is over here, will hear an, a taunt command and he'll-
Those were the issues solved by going up to seven foot again. No, those were the issues. Removing the double taunt again. Try to go here, and then if we hear a taunt come out, try to go here, then here, then here. But the problem is, other grunts will also hear taunt commands in different directions, and they'll all be like walking through each other. And in the end, you get a kind of stun paralysis of where all of them are walking through each other, and then I'm giving new attack commands again, just attack move whoever's in front of you, new taunts. So what happened was, when taunts were too strong, is that uh, units pretty much got perma-stunned almost, and not doing enough hits. And then even if you try to go around and get to the archer, right, you wanted to go all the way there to the archer, you would keep getting interrupted because of the taunt. And so that was really annoying to play against, but now taunt is one activation again. Now yep. mountain giants are kind of useless again. People aren't really making them all that much. So they're just a really hard unit to balance. They recently received a nerf to their hardened skin, which was very deserved, by the way, which reduced the amount of physical damage they took. There was a kind of 12, second, uh, 12 damage reduction that I think is 10 damage reduction now, baseline. And then it starts looking at their armor class, etc. So right now they're not being used a lot. Their taunt isn't as annoying. It can be overridden with skill and APM pretty easily. So maybe they're too useless right now. And they get, yeah, and they got plus two armor instead, which is exactly a change that I lobbied for, that their hardened skin should be weaker, but that yeah. they should be more useful at tier two. Yes. yes, nobody's making them at tier two. So maybe they're still too weak. I don't know if they need more. That's also a lot because of crowd control. Um... And you try to be at 50, like, usually when you go for Mountain Giants, you want to break upkeep with them. Because if not, you don't have enough damage. Because they soak up so much supply that you don't have any damage, really. If there's an issue with this change, and I think it's only about army composition, could be a difference of having fairy uh, Mana Flare or not, or an additional Archer or something. Um, I really like the Mountain Giant as a role player to soak up damage. I think this is a good change. More changes. I don't know if this is going to be enough, but I think it's worth trying out. Uh, that's one on one, though. For four on four, I think this is going to be kind of a toxic improvement. I don't care. More Mountain Giants. I think they need more of a rework than this. That's going to be my judgment. I'm noticing I'm trying to be more positive about this than I actually am. I don't think this is a good idea. I think they need more of a change. For F for FFA, we don't see them, but for 4 on 4, uh, MG is very good. I think they need more of a rethinking. That's my official opinion on this for now. All right, next. Vorpal Blade Research Time Reduced. So this is a Glaive Thrower upgrade where they have... I'm really curious. Because does anyone have a strong opinion on this? <laughs> Not really, right? Uh... Trouble missing. They're, it travels faster and it's much more likely to hit. Glaive throwers are a niche tier one siege unit, which gives them- Is this still up to date? You know, I know so little about Vorpal Blades. To be honest, I don't even know what it does. It was changed. Because this is not true anymore, right? The piercing thing. It's not storm hammers, is it? Like, the old Warpal Blades was basically like storm hammers. So it creates a little shockwave after the impact. Kind of. But it just makes the projectile faster, isn't it? Like, that's it. It's still piercing, but now it can miss. So it is a bit like Storm Hammers. So, because this was reverted, right? I'm pretty sure it was. So, Liquipedia says, Vorpal Glaive's upgrade no longer changes to do damage in a line. Instead, glaive throwers keep their pre-upgrade circular effect damage. 
it I think it seriously just increases the projectile speed so you can't really dodge it. Yeah, that's that's what I thought. Like what a horrible upgrade. <laughs> I mean, what a horrible upgrade this is. Like it really does like nobody cares. This was the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got confused as well. It is cheap. I mean, 125 to 100. Wow. Yeah, we should probably put this on a list. Like, compare this. Compare. This has to be compared, by the way, to Disease Cloud. Burning oil, which is not good, but at least you immediately see what it does. And fragmentation shards. Fragmentation shards. To, to be fair, Vorpal Blades was very much broken before this change. Yo! Yo! That was also because it was a guaranteed hit. That was like. Glaive throwers were heat seeking missiles. There was no way to dodge anything. It did a lot of damage. I very much agree. But this upgrade is shit. It's just pure shit. It is. So nobody can have a strong opinion on this because nobody cares. But this is wrong. Like, if someone has a direct connection to Grubby's editor, the Mojo Storm Stout stuff. Is very much outdated. They're an important design niche. There are purposes for them. They are not meant to be masked normally. And so I don't expect to see many glaives normally because there are better alternatives, usually for Night Elf, to use. However, with Priestess of the Moon becoming potentially more useful in Night Elf Mirror, we might be seeing Priestess Huntress Dryad again, or Priestess Huntress. And that means we may see more Mountain Giants again. I mean, if a night elf wants to siege anything, just use archers. And just use bears. It doesn't matter. You can also use hunters. It doesn't really matter. Outside of dryads, and maybe hippo riders and fairies and all that stuff, I think every, like, a lot of stuff that is played is a siege unit. Mass Archer, easy siege. Mass Hunts, easy siege. Bears, called Siege Bears for a reason. Clobbering time with Mountain Giants, easy siege. They don't even need the Glaive Thrower. I think that's pretty interesting. So, um... People will hate that comment and <laughs> I love it already. Maybe this is okay. This research is not very good right now. It's okay to make it come out faster. Undead. Oh, I'm very curious to see what they're gonna come up with for undead what's it gonna be cool okay most pro gamers almost everyone thinks that ghoul frenzy attack speed is a bit too much it used to be 25 attack speed and then it got buffed to 35 and ghoul frenzy uh ghouls have been pretty insane ever since when asked which unit is most op uh, in a recent interview most korean and chinese pro gamers said ghoul Yep. And it seems very hard for Night Elf to beat Undead right now uh, at the very, very high level. On average, the win rates are pretty good. But at the very high level, Night Elf struggle a bit with Undead. This might help. I think this is deserved. And also for the Doomsayers, I think Ghouls are still very good. And I think Undead's still in a good place with this. It's way too little. What I do wonder is how Orc Torrents against Undead will uh, affect things. If I'm being honest... I don't think... Like, to be honest, I don't think Grubby realizes how little this changes. This changes nothing, and I wonder if he realizes how oppressive ghouls are. I think Grubby clearly underestimates the presence of ghouls in the meta, especially versus night elves. But we all know that Grubby doesn't care about night elves, right? So, okay, I guess we don't care. Torrents will make much of a difference in the uh, early mid game against undead because although it helps you to beat ghouls, I don't think any undead commits their slow ghouls at tier two. 
but it'll be curious to see how this uh, affects things. Curse can now target mechanical units. How do you guys like that change? I like that quite a bit, actually. There aren't a lot of mechanical units. There's Orc Demolisher, uh, the Night Elf Glaive Thrower. There is the uh, Undead Meat Wagon, the Obsidian Statue. Definitely want to curse that seven magical damage. And then you've got the Goblin Shredder. You've got Clockwork Goblins from the factory from Goblin Tinker. Uh, there's Robo Gobo, the Tinker. Ah, the Tinker ult. Robo Goblin yep. can now be cursed. But I think, and I'm kind of beating around the bush here. I'm going to stop beating around the bush, okay? This is about flying machines and in particular, siege engines. Or, as we like to call them, steam tanks or tanks. That is many tank, yes? Tanks right now cannot be countered with curse. And once you can cast counter them with curse, that's crazy. I'm surprised curse doesn't work on tanks actually, because fairy fire does, slow does, purge, lightning shield, all kinds of things work on uh, tanks. Apparently only curse doesn't. Of course you can't possess them, but they're mechanical. How can you possess a machine? The possess robot, the, uh, the mind. Dude, possess the driver. It's easy. You don't have to possess the entire machine. All you need is the driver. A pilot. In the machine. Uh, I think this helps Undead to counter uh, siege, siege weaponry, like siege engines, obviously. It's going to make it actually very hard to play tanks against them. Siege engines are AI. They don't have a driver. Why do they cost supply then? Undead. But luckily, Banshees are somewhat vulnerable, so it's not like... Um... Let, let me say it this way. I think Siege Engines should be a valuable unit, a usable, viable unit. But I don't think the Spam Tower, Spam Expo, Spam Siege Engine, Send and Forget strategy should ever be a very easy win condition. I think Siege Engines in, in proper gameplay should be supported with additional units and or hero support. Yes. So you come in with the heroes and the siege engines, and then you try to take down the defending Banshee or Meat Wagon to buy space for Meat Wagon. Yes. That's a skillful implementation of it. The way that people used to use them, where you just send mass siege engines and just try to steam waltz and bulldoze everyone's base without even being there with the rest of your army. Those days are thankfully behind us, and they should be. And that's... I think, like... It would put the spell more in line w w with the other tier 1 stuff. But if you do this, I think you drastically have to change curse either in duration or in the effect or in mana cost. Like if you give this buff, curse is crazy. Curse is so good. I think if you do this and in general, a nerf to 25% is granted. Tanks already dead 5 plus years WTF. Bro, have you watched any Undead versus Human game in the past 5 years? I think curse. I'm not. I'm not against these spells working on mechanic, but I'm very much for a curse nerf. That's where curse helps the most, even more now. I think this is a cool change. Cripple can. Oh my god! What really? Cripple can now target mechanical units. You're gonna cripple tank and curse. It's almost going to heal the building. Which is, of course, true for anyone you curse and cripple. We're talking about, what is this, like 70% damage reduction, cripple? And curse is 33% mischance? Wow. Both Necro and Banshee are going to get anti-mechanical properties. Very interesting. Let's go on. Tomb the scroll of healing has been removed from Tomb of Relics. Wow. Among all the racial shops... The only place where you could get heal scrolls. That is so huge. That's crazy. 
Do I like it? Well, let's put it this way. Imagine if any race had potion of invulnerability in their own shop. So instead of competing for a neutral terrain where you can deny items to your opponent even as you buy them, uh, heal scroll monopoly, invul potion monopoly, uh, instead someone can just get it at home. That feels pretty cheap. Does Happy ever buy heal scroll from uh, Tomb of Relics? Yeah, he does. Of course. We all do. Anyone that plays Undead does that. You would prefer to go for a, a heal scroll from the neutral shop because it also ends up being a potential soft deny for an opponent. But of course you'll pick it up if that's when you happen to have money with nothing else to spend on it. Yep. I think this is a good change. I feel like heal scrolls should be uh, subject to the monopoly and the map control uh, fight of the middle of the map. Right on. I think, again, this should have happened with the introduction of Ritual Dagger four years ago. Wand of Negation added to the Tomb of Relics available at Tier 2? What? Oh my god. Really? This is Reign of Chaos. This is a, a, a Reign of Chaos situation. Of course, there was no Tomb of Relics in Reign of Chaos, but okay. What is Wand of Negation? Wand of Negation, if I recall correctly, is a 200 gold item that has three consumable charges upon which it will disappear. Each does an area of effect of probably about 400 range. Uh, maybe three, four. It's kind of crazy that he remembers this from the top of his head. That's kind of crazy. 400 radius, a circle. Uh, of dispel of all buffs and debuffs in an area dealing damage to summoned units as well probably 225 damage that means you can use them to yeah. dispel water elementals it can dispel feral spirit it can dispel skeletons you can remove slow on slow ghouls or even on fast ghouls because you know it's available at tier 2 but you still have it at tier 3 items got no cast time instant dispel I did not think about this I did not think about this. I truly did not think about this. Yep. That's right. That's a problem I did not see before. Now I understand the outrage about this item. Holy... Listen. You know this How I Met Your Mother episode where they realize something about their friends and... You hear this screen crackling sound or the glass shattering sound? That's crazy. So, old man made a How I Met Your Mother reference in 2024. I know, I know, I know. So, while I like this change in general, during my initial patch review, I also clearly said um, we have to look at the implementation. And the problem here, I think, the problem is not the dispel. Thank you, Manske, for the sub. Ew. Ew! Uh, so I don't think the problem is the dispel itself. I don't think it's the damage. I think it's the charges. So. What if you reduce the charges? And make it slightly more expensive per charge. Add a cooldown. I think you'd have to drastically change the way items work. Wait, no! Rod of Necromancy! Rod of Necromancy has a cooldown. So, we gotta figure out if this item has a cooldown before... It, because items have a cooldown. We just have to figure out if this item has a cooldown. A lot of items have cooldown. Yeah, 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 yeah. Items in general as w Yeah. But charged items oftentimes don't. That's correct. Oh, it has the stat 
ignore cooldown equals true. That has to be changed. Ignore cooldown equals true. I think reducing charges and add a cooldown is better. Ah, then it's still two, two dispels immediately. Okay, guys. Would, would a purge be better than an AoE dispel? Every race has a single target dispel and an AoE dispel, right? You got Dryads, you got Wisps. You got Breakers, you got Priests. You got Shaman, you got Walkers. Single target dispel, AoE dispel. The Destroyer is AoE dispel. And then the item could be single target dispel. Breaker isn't a dispel, but it works. Okay, then call it single target debuff. Or single target nerf or something. It fulfills much of the role. Thank you, Carifian. Yeah, so I guess Wand of Negation cannot ignore cooldown. That's crazy. Just adding a cooldown doesn't fix the problem because you can swap it between heroes. Ah, this is a tricky one, man. This is a tricky one. Even if it's OP, just tweak it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly, exactly. That's exactly what I say. Pretty much. Exactly, pretty much. <laughs> um, I really like the ability for Under to have a dispel tier 2, but the current implementation seems wrong. Yeah, this is still a big question to me. Wiki says 200 damage, okay? Yeah, and it was removed 3rd of July 2003 from the neutral goblin shop. And now it's been added. <laughs> Next change, Tomb of Experience and Goblin Landmines added to Tomb of Relics. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's, um, that's interesting. I think that's too good. I feel like there's no way that this still fits in the current game state of Warcraft 3. Again, I don't mind trying it. I feel like it'll make good content to try this on PTR, but this seems too nutty. I see this being nutty and I think I have a nut allergy. No thanks. Meat Wagon speed increased by 20. Oh! If it's a single target with two charges for 200 gold, would it be too OP? I don't know, man. There must be smarter people than me. Okay, all right. They're really, uh, they're trying to bring back the corpse mechanic for undead. Meat Wagon Necromancer builds. It's good that I just started practicing Meat Wagon Necro Rush again, uh, which by the way, has rarely ever been a valid strategy in the pro games of Warcraft 3, but is a very popular underdog strategy for cute little noobs and intermediate players. Meat wagons being faster is going to help them to catch up more to the necromander, necromancer caravan. I don't mind this at all. Meat wagons are pretty weak, man. Both in their corpse mechanic uh, utilization as well as as a siege breaker. People generally don't go meat wagon. And this is going to be making them slightly better. Should Demolisher get the same treatment? Orc Demolisher. Because Mortar Team is already good. Glaive Thrower is already bad. But the death. I see this a lot, so I want to comment on this real quick. Mortar Teams have higher movement speed because they are nukeable. Colnova, Stormbolt, etc. They're also hexable. The mechanical units aren't. So I think that's a good trade off. Demo. Should the demo be able to uh, be a bit faster too? That would be nice. Uh, Happy has been doing Necro Wagon versus Human in most maps in Ladder since three days ago. Really? He's been watching my games. He's been watching my meme games and copying, <laughs> finally. <laughs> he thought, Grubby's undead. That looks interesting. I've never thought about this. Yet, I'm going to do it now. Davai. Wait, is this Happy's patch note? <laughs> it's like, okay, trade deal, I'll give you 5 attack speed, and I'll take 4 buffs to cast their builds. Yeah, and Frostworm, Freezing Breath, Lumbercast reduced by 50. That's fine. Okay, cool. 
I think this is all pretty exciting stuff. This is probably the crazy one. Uh, Wand of Negation. Next. Neutral. Fire Lord. Volcano building damage. Factor reduced from 3 to 2. What does that mean? Did Volcano do 3 times as much damage on buildings as it does on units, but now only 2 times? Is this a Volcano damage nerf? Was Volcano just too strong? Yeah. Is the time of Volcano domination over, chat? He's ridiculing this. But Volcano is crazy against buildings. I don't know why he's ridiculing this. Maybe it's from a one-on-one -on -one perspective, but even there, like, Volcano is crazy. <laughs> Volcano. Volcano is too strong. <laughs> one of the worst heroes in the game. Yeah, but it's like 300 damage per wave. <laughs> Crazy. This entire power strength, power strength a ability, his entire ability aptitude comes from his power at level one, two, and three. Has just. I think he's just talking one on one. Yeah, but previously he also talked about four and four and FFA. Um, so yeah, I mean, everybody who saw a fire lord in FFA will agree that this change is good. Been nerfed in his level six. I think you could make this from 2 to 5 and his win rate would still drop. If you made building damage times 10 instead of times 3, more people would go Fire Lord first and solo Fire Lord and would lose as a result. Mm. The better a Volcano is, the lower his win rate will be. So this is actually good. <laughs> this nerf that comes completely falling out of the sky is a is a net positive because you won't get baited into ever thinking going late game with fire lord is okay because it's not okay anyway with all seriousness i don't think we need to nerf this one boys let's I move on do. naga seawitch tornado speed i Next think we do but we should touch ultimates in general because there's a crazy disparency from being super powerful and being weak slash Easy to counter slash cancel. Still gonna nerf tornado. No? Tornado too good? Okay. Tornado speed base and minimum speed increase from 75 to 150. It's a tornado nerf. It's a tornado buff. Tornado's faster. That's very realistic. Very realistic. And on that note, I approve it. All right. What about earthquake? Can we like take a look at all the useless ultimates? I was yes. actually gonna do a, her a heroic ultimate tier list, but uh, now I feel like I should wait to see where the pieces fall in this one. Because <laughs> if tornado and volcano are changing, then what about earthquake and stuff? And stampede? We're updating the tournament schedule to have more 1 on 1, 2v2 during the week, and 3v3 on Sundays, and no more 4 on 4. Map will update, minus springtime, plus tide hunters. Here's the map pool. Okay, cool. Well, <laughs> very interesting. I like that they're being a little creative, very creative with it. And um, if it's anything like the previous PTR patches, they'll probably keep iterating on it, going, uh, making adjustment based on uh, feedback and additional testing. Thank you for the PTR patch, Blizzard. Please give us more. If you enjoyed watching this video, hit me up with a sub and you'll see more content like this and also more content not at all like this. Make sure to sub for that too. Sub to the grub and sub to the dub. That's what I say. Here's the video, everybody. Uh, very good insight as always. I don't agree with everything, uh, but I think... I also said this before and I posted about it. There's no crazy outrage this time unlike last time with the pickaxe with the devotion aura or the one before with tanks attack ground etc in all previous first versions of the ptr there was something that made me really angry it's not the case here i think hmm. at least interesting maybe a tweak here and there but you know hmm Maybe I'm getting old and tame.
But yeah, I think uh, everybody is more or less on the same page that this is not horrible. 